and welcome back everyone to the video series The Diggy Show on MTV that has their fingers in a lot of holes. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge 38, Ride or Dies, Episode 1. We had the premiere, and can I just say, I'm always excited for every single premiere episode. Like, I get excited for Episode 1's The Unknown, getting to know what, like, the basis of the season is going to be like and how the season starts off, and I have to say that this is one of the better premiere episodes that we've gotten in quite a while. I think that this was awesome. It hit every single note that we've been wanting to see on the challenge, and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. So let's stop wasting time and get right where this episode begins, and that is everybody's on a boat and they're drinking champagne and just having a good time. And they are getting excited to be not only on the challenge, but they're happy to be there with somebody that they trust wholeheartedly. They are with their quote-unquote ride or dies. At least majority of people are there with their ride or dies. They're either there with their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their husband, wife, brother, sister, uh, best friend, and they're coming in to play this game, and they have that support system already baked into the game, and it's smooth sailing, except when Laurel is topping everybody off to do the cheers at the beginning of the episode, and she does not see Turbo and does not give him more champagne, and Turbo calls Laurel out, my gosh, <laughs> and calls her an idiot on top of that. Now, if you told me at the beginning of the season that Laurel and Turbo would be on this season, I would be excited, but if you told me in the first five minutes they were gonna have an argument, I wouldn't have believed you, but I'm happy that we're here watching this season as it is unfold because there's already more drama in the first five minutes of this episode than all of the Challenge USA combined, and I am here for it. Now we move on to everybody running into the Challenge house, looking for beds, looking for places to sleep, as well as grabbing some more drinks, grabbing some more eats, getting to know everybody. Now on night one, we normally get a speech from a veteran. Normally it is bananas. If it's not bananas, then it's CT. Neither of them are in the house at this moment. So Nellie T gets to make the toast. And I think I would give this toast a four out of 10. My goodness, I don't know if he knew he was supposed to be giving the toast or the speech at the beginning of this episode, but if he knew and that's the speech he prepared for, my gosh, but if that was just like off the top of his head, then I have to give it to him because I don't know if I could make a better speech off the top of my head. Okay, maybe I could, but I'm going to give it to Nelson. It was decent if it was just off the top of his head, but it was it was pretty rough if we're going over like all the different species that we've had had at the beginning of every single challenge season. But hey, A for effort, you know? Speaking of Nelson, we have his partner Norris here and we see... Later on, as the night is going on, that Johnny and Norris are very, very close. And we hear the backstory that at the airport, they had a couple of drinks, and on the plane, they were making out. And they brought that makeout session here onto the challenge, which does not bode well for Raven and Johnny's potential will-they-won't-they they kind of vibe. As we get a little bit more insight on their type of ride-or-die relationship slash friendship, where Johnny and Raven kind of met, and there was this like big flirtation, but Johnny won't commit as he's been on Love Island, All-Star Shore, and who knows what other shows he could be on in the future where he's making out with somebody, but right now he is three for three on getting on a TV show and making out with somebody. He's having the time of his life where the edit makes it seem like Raven wants more than just a friendship. And so this isn't gonna go well for their ride or die team dynamic, I feel, moving forward. But let's move forward to the morning session where we have Fessy and Colleen in the jacuzzi and Fessy is trying to put Messi in the game whereas Colleen is trying to pull a fast one saying that she was from Love Island Germany instead of the mole but Fessy at this moment could not care less on what show she is from all he wants to know is girl you like what you see Let's move on to everybody donning up their challenge gear heading out to the daily challenge to finally meet up with TJ 
And that's where TJ hits us with some news that Casey and Kenny are not in the game at this moment. Because if we remember from the trailer that's at the end of this episode and all the other trailers, Casey and Kenny are in this game. They're going to be doing daily challenges. So there's a point where it's like, okay, well, they're definitely not out of the game for good, even though TJ makes it kind of sound that way. And then he brings in two new teams of Emmy and Nam and Olivia and Horatio. Now, some people might be questioning, why are two teams brought in when only Casey and Kenny had left the game? Well, this just solidifies the rumor that there was a second quarantine. Casey and Kenny had to stay back because they couldn't get well quick enough while filming resumed, as well as Anissa and her original partner, James, also had to stay back before James had to be completely DQ'd from the season. And this is where Anissa and Jordan's ride or die and being part of TJ's twist all stems from. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to this week's daily challenge called Bolas for Blood, where every team has a station. They have to answer three questions using the bolas in the mud. They have to search for it. They have to put it on their station. Once they answered all three questions, they have to take those bolas and run it up to the finish line. The first team to get all three of their bolas up to the finish line Wind power went into safety while everybody could be on the chopping block. Now, I have to say, when listening to the instructions for this daily challenge, I was like, this seems super simple. But this was actually a gold mine in a mud pit because I really enjoyed some of the commentary. Now, I did feel bad because the international players did not know what the word cumulative, I can't even say it, cumulative, Synonym for combined. They didn't know what that word meant because of the translation issues, but I'm actually quite surprised that majority of the US players even knew what that dollar word meant. Good job on that, MTV. Why not just put combined on your sign here? But then we get Chauncey and Amber, and one of the questions is multiply the number of letters in your name with your partner's name. And Chauncey is counting the number of letters in Amber's name. In Amber, he had to count them on her shirt. That was awesome. But what takes the cake here is Nelson not knowing his own age. They lose this. They have all their bullets. They get a check. It's incorrect. They ultimately lose this daily challenge. And it's because at the end, Nelson goes, oh, yeah, I'm 33, not 32. And it is just the funniest thing. Now, I have to point something out in this edit. They are leaning heavy on the fact that Nelson has not won a daily challenge in quite some time. It's vendettas since the last time he won a daily challenge. And so they really lean into it that it's been 51, now 52 straight daily losses. And I think they're playing into that because down the line during the season, he will win one. He will break his daily losing streak in this season, and I think that's why they're making us so hyper aware of it this early on. So keep our eyes out on it. Maybe he just keeps losing, but I think that they're really playing it up in the edit to get him to get that win. Johnny and Raven actually get a check. They get their bolas first. They're picking it up. They're running. They're taking off for the finish line. Jay and Michelle are close behind. Sam and Kayla also are close behind, but Johnny and Raven are able to pull out this win. A rookie, rookie team being able to pull out this win and they get into power and TJ tells them that they have to call out four teams to possibly be sent into the elimination and they have to interrogate them all. Back at the challenge house, we have the deliberation where Johnny and Raven are looking at the loser board and they're trying to come up with a plan of which four teams to call out. Johnny seems to know exactly what he wants to do while he wants to not get so much blood on his hands. So he doesn't want to take all the rookie rookie teams off the list. And he doesn't want to call out just vet vet teams or all the vets. And Raven's like, why not? I'm with Raven on this point. Why not just call people out? You are a rookie rookie team. You are one of the smaller stature teams, I think. And you won your first daily challenge. You won the first daily challenge. So to me, 
You're always gonna have a target on your back. Why not swing big, just call out all the big dogs and make them go against each other early on. But Johnny does not want to do that. He decides he's gonna call in Devin and Tori, which was great. Kim and Colleen, ugh. Laurel and Jack, which is a great call. And then Kayla and Sam, sure. I mean, Kayla's a vet, they're married. You're thinking that their bond is the strongest in the game. They call all four of those teams in to interrogate them. They're all looking for deals, right? They're asking, if we spare you, what will you do for us? Pretty much everybody says that they can be friends, they can look out for each other. They even call Devin and Tori the king and queen of the vets because they are a vet vet team. And I mean, they did make it to the finals last season. So this was an awesome call out by Johnny and Raven to bring them in and try to strike up some sort of deal, especially if you think that they have a lot of sway in the game, which I do think that Devin and Tori do have a lot of sway in the game. While talking to Colleen and Kim, they strike up like a four person alliance, a rookie rookie alliance between them that if they're ever in the conversations, they'll give each other the information and that they'll be looking out for each other, which they say, yeah, of course. Then we get to Laurel and Jack and Jack spills the beans that look, Colleen isn't from Love Island, Germany. She's from the mole. She is lying to all of us from day one. So how can you trust them? You should send them into the elimination. And also the team that you throw into elimination should be based off performance from the daily challenge from earlier today. One, no, we don't go off of performance. You go off the biggest threats. And two, unless you are from a dating show like Love Island, everybody's original show contains lying. Everybody in this house has lied before. You've either played Big Brother, you've either played Survivor, you played The Challenge, you've lied. You've lied to somebody, you've tried to backstab somebody. So who cares if she's from the mole, yes. The whole basis of the mole is to lie and deceive. But you could make an argument that every show that is reality competition based besides the Love Island and the Amazing Race is really all about lying and deceiving somebody to win the game. I understand that they're playing any and all cards to keep themselves out of the elimination. And yes, Colleen did lie about being on Love Island. I find that point a bit moot. I actually really like that Colleen decided to change up. Like, honestly, if Jack wasn't there, everybody would have been like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of Love Island. They have it in Germany? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know? We move over to the bar scene while everybody is having a good time. Nelson is falling for Olivia, and uh, Olivia is putting on massive flirt vibes, and Nelson got those hard eyes, you know? Everybody's having a great time, especially Laurel and Jack who are talking up Raven, really being there for her, really listening to her, but it's all for an ulterior motive to get her into a nice sense of security so they will not be picked by them going into the elimination. We move back to the challenge house for a quick alliance meeting of Michelle, Jay, Johnny, Raven, Chauncey, and Amber they are a little alliance and they agree that Johnny should take a big move, big swing, send a vet into the elimination and we have your back and let's run this game. Speaking of the elimination, everybody dons their challenge gear, meets up with TJ in the zone, which is the name of the elimination arena for this season. TJ greets everybody. Then he asked for the four teams that were nominated to come join him on the zone floor, where then he turns the attention over to Johnny and Raven, asking who would they like to send into the elimination. And this is where Johnny has this big speech of, we're not gonna wimp out, we're gonna make a big move, and we're gonna really make a mark in this game. And we're gonna pick Kayla and Sam, which I have to say, little bit disappointing. Now I'm gonna get into this decision more in Friday's Tiny Table Talk and also dive more deeply into Johnny and Raven's team dynamic. But to me, if I could put a metaphor to this decision, I would have to hearken to baseball where I think Johnny and Raven are at the plate wanting to smash this ball and hit a home run. And with this decision of calling out Kayla and Sam into the elimination, he does a foul tip. Like he makes contact by sending in a vet into the elimination, but out of all the opportunities that could have happened, that one was 
the least exciting when you have Tori and Devin, whom you called the king and queen of the vets down there, as well as a former champion in Laurel, and you decide to call out Kayla and Sam. Luckily, TJ has another twist up his sleeve. I thought I was wearing long sleeves, but he has another twist up his sleeve called the draw. And there is a stone in the zone with three daggers where the other three teams are going to be having to pull out these daggers. And that will determine who will be going into the elimination against Kayla and Sam. Tori and Devin pull out a blank sword. Laurel and Jack pull out a blank sword and that leaves Colleen and Kim. Now, Laurel, Jack, Tori, Devin, see blank. They're thinking this is like the kill card. If you see something, that's bad. So we didn't see anything. Blank card meant safety. So blank dagger must mean safety. No, 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 no. Colleen and Kim pull out the sword and it says safe. So now not only are they safe, but now they get to choose out of the remaining two teams who to send into the elimination. And they decide because Jack is a rookie and they are a rookie rookie team and they want to look out for fellow rookies. They decide to send in the vet vet team of Tori and Devin. Let's go, baby. You couldn't have asked for a better result. If you are the audience members, if you are a challenge fan, if you are the challenge producers, you're sitting there going, yes, finally, Colleen and Kim coming out the gate. Boom, they hit a home run. That's how you do it, Johnny and Raven. And so we have Kayla and Sam versus Tori and Devin in this week's elimination called You Move, I Move. And this is this big old giant maze puzzle. It's like a tabletop puzzle where you have to like tilt the board to get the balls to move the way you want to. However, you're not using your hands, you're using your feet as you have to balance on these boards to make the board move one way or the other. One team member has the ability to move it one way horizontally and the other team member gets to do it vertically. Now I have to say, I really enjoyed this elimination being the first elimination because this tested your puzzle skills but also your communication skills. How well can you work with your partner and communicate with your partner in a highly stressful situation in a relatively difficult puzzle? And once hearing the directions, I was like, this is in the bag for Tori and Devin. One, I think they have better communication skills. They've known each other longer than Kayla and Sam have known each other. Yes, they are married, but I mean, I watch 90 Day Fiance and those people get married in 90 days. They've talked to each other on the phone for like two years, yet they still don't know anything about each other. So not only did I think that Devin was going to win already because it's a puzzle, but he already has a sort of puzzle like this in his house. It's just a bloodbath. I mean, as much of a bloodbath as you can have with a maze puzzle like this one, because Tori and Devin just sink ball after ball after ball in the hole. Call them Steph Curry because, man, they absolutely drained all these five balls while Kayla and Sam only got one. And that means Kayla and Sam are eliminated first in this game and Tori and Devin win, getting to stay in this game. We have another vet vet team coming into the game as part of TJ's twist, and that is Bananas and Nani. And that's where this episode ends with Bananas and Nani coming into the game, getting ready to join into it, and then start playing this game with everybody else. And then I'm sure maybe next week we'll see Anissa and Jordan or Darrell and Veronica. And then maybe an episode or two later, we'll get another one of those pairs to enter the game. But at this moment, we lose Kayla and Sam, and we gain Bananas and Nani, and that is where this episode ends. What'd you think about this premiere episode? Let me know down in the comment section below. What'd you think about the cast? What'd you think about the daily challenge? What'd you think about the eliminations? Johnny and Raven's decision on the four teams. Do you think they made a big move sending in Kayla and Sam? And what'd you think about the draw and Colleen and Kim Throwing in Devin and Tori. I really enjoyed this premiere episode. I thought the cast was really good. I love the soundtrack. The vibe of the season is on point. I think if the challenge season can keep on this trajectory and keep this hype level, oh, this is going to be one of the best seasons that we've had to date. But it's still early. This is just the premiere episode. But 
I want to hear from you. What did you think about this episode? And who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting against? Let me know anything and everything down in the comment section below. I'm going to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who is watching this video up to this point. I'll be back tomorrow for Friday's Tiny Table Talk for episode one because those are back on the main channel as well as I'll be back with much more Challenge 38 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.